Hello everybody, my name's Brad Gaddy, and today I'm here to share my thoughts on the Netflix original film To All the Boys I've Loved Before. To All the Boys I've Loved Before tells the story of two people, Laura Jean Covey and Peter Kavinsky, who find themselves in a fake relationship. So Peter Kavinsky has these reasons uh, for entering into this fake relationship. It basically boils down to him wanting to make his recent ex-girlfriend jealous, and Laura Jean Covey is trying to avoid this other boy who she thinks she has this big crush on. She doesn't want that boy to know that because that boy just broke up with Lara Jean Covey's sister. So Lara Jean Covey, out of a duty to her sister, wants to avoid that boy, so she decides to enter this fake relationship with Peter Kavinsky. The problem with that is the movie really ends up playing out like any other fake relationship movie that you've seen before. There's not really any surprises or um, anything that catches you off guard along the way, it really does play out uh, to all the beats that you would expect from a fake relationship movie. So for one of the things that I didn't like so well in the movie is it starts out with this internal narration, which I find really annoying uh, in a lot of films, and uh, this movie really is the exact reason why I don't like it. Uh, and the problem with it is the internal narration that plays over the clips doesn't tell the audience anything that they can't really uh, infer or just see on their own. So I think that that is just a way for the movie to end up treating the audience uh, like they're dumb and can't figure anything out uh, by themselves, so I'm not a huge fan of it. So let's start with some of the good things that I liked in the movie. I thought that the soundtrack was really enjoyable and did work for the atmosphere and themes that the entire movie was trying to build. Um, throughout the film, they're trying to go for this uh, contemporary take on the 1980s John Hughes romantic comedy genre. So the soundtrack does do a good job of taking that John Hughes vibe and bringing it into a contemporary setting. Another thing I really liked in the movie was its use of color. It had a lot of uh, bright uh, but slightly muted colors to give it more of that 80s John Hughes vibe that it's trying uh, to build throughout the film. Now another thing that I did like in the film was the two leads. I thought that uh, the chemistry between Peter Kavinsky and Lara Jean Covey did work, but they are definitely the two that stand out among all the other characters. So tying that into another negative is that besides the two leads, none of the other characters uh, stand out. Like there's this other boy that uh, Lara Jean had had a really big crush on at the start of the film and you're led to think that he's going to play a big role in the movie but he really doesn't and he just ends up showing up in a few random scenes and doesn't have uh, much to do and just feels forced into the movie. Uh, and that's the same situation for quite a few of the other characters. Uh, but because the two leads are pretty enjoyable to watch, in my opinion that makes up for it and makes just the other characters pretty dismissible, uh, but that's just my take on it. So at the end of the second act of the movie, one thing that I really hate to see ends up happening, and that's this. Okay, so Lara Jean Covey and Peter Kavinsky are at kind of this difficult spot in their relationship, and Lara Jean thinks Peter has done something that actually hasn't happened, and so what she does is she cuts him off from finishing his lines, and that works to just shoehorn in drama that doesn't need to be there if she would have just listened to him, uh, and that happens all the times in movies, and I think that's really obnoxious because then we're just left to think, why didn't Peter just send her a text later clarifying everything that she had uh, misunderstood, and that would have just solved all these problems. And so to have a whole act of a movie based on a misunderstanding between two characters that could have been easily avoided, uh, to me just comes across as really poor writing. Another thing that I liked about the movie is it does have a lot of nice, interesting shots um, and some good cinematography uh, throughout it. I mean, it has some nice establishing shots, uh, it has a lot of nice shots with some ambient light. With these shots, we even get some symbolism sometimes. Like, for example, there's this part where Peter Kavinsky and Lara Jean Covey are having an argument and they're walking through this hall and they come up on these double doors that are open and Peter's on one side and Lara's on the other and there's this uh, support bar standing in the middle of them kind of just symbolizing uh, their disagreement and separation in that moment. For similar recommendations to this film I'd have to go with uh, maybe Freaky Friday or Princess Diaries or even just those original 1980s teen comedies like The Breakfast Club or Sixteen Candles, uh, all of which I actually think are better films than To All the Boys I've Loved Before. Anyways guys, those are my thoughts on To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I'm going to go ahead and give the movie a 6 out of 10. If you saw the movie, feel free to let me know what you thought down below in the comments and look forward to more reviews from me in the future. Thanks.